So before Congress left Washington on Friday for a two-week recess, members narrowly avoided a government shutdown, passing a $1.2 trillion spending bill. But that move may have come at a cost, as Republicans are now toying once again with the idea of getting rid of the Speaker of the House. This all comes as their majority in the House continues to shrink. For the latest, let's bring in NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Ryan Nobles. Ryan, how do you expect this to play out, and where does Ukraine stand in all of this in terms of funding? Yeah, they are all intertwined, Amika. There's no doubt about that. And, and what's really fascinating about the situation that Mike Johnson finds himself in uh, is that uh, it's really a, a, a difficult choice because any move that he makes is going to draw the ire of someone on the other side of this. He's clearly in the middle of a very difficult situation. And House Republicans have made it very clear that they do not want Mike Johnson to work with Democrats. But the problem is when you only have a one-seat majority, uh, which is what the House Republican caucus is going to end up here in the next couple of weeks as Ken Buck of Colorado steps down and then uh, Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin steps down, uh, when you end up in a situation where where you only have a one-seat majority, you have to work with Democrats in order to get anything done. And so what this very small faction of conservative Republicans are telling him is that if you work with Democrats, especially when it comes to Ukraine funding, which is the next big item that he has to deal with, uh, we're going to push to remove you from office. Uh, and uh, he, uh, uh, Mike Johnson's in a situation where he really doesn't have too many options. And, and I have to tell you, when you talk to both Republicans and Democrats in the House, there's an overwhelming sense that no one really Really wants to go through the drama of another Speaker of the House being removed from office uh, in the middle of a term. But the, the weird situation we find ourselves in here is that it doesn't really matter what a, a vast majority of members of Congress think, because it only takes just a couple of conservative House Republicans to make a move uh, on a motion to vacate. And if, you know, there are many members that are still entertaining this idea that if Ukraine funding comes to the floor here in the next couple of weeks, they will support Marjorie Taylor Greene's effort to remove Mike Johnson from office. And that's where I think an, an interesting situation comes up, really an unprecedented one, Mika and Joe, and that is will Democrats step in and protect Mike Johnson's speakership? especially if Johnson's willing to put Ukraine funding on the floor. Tom Swazi uh, of New York has already said that he is willing to do that. Jared Moskowitz of Florida also. Uh, so Mike Johnson is in a situation here where if he worked with Democrats, he could be in trouble. But the Democrats may also be his only salvation. Uh, and that may be a situation that this conservative Republican never thought he would find himself in. And certainly, Ryan, Democrats have already had to help him pass legislation. It was certainly an odd co coalition uh, created there. So Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, you know, this was her idea on Friday. She sort of sent mixed signals whether or not this was a full-fledged effort to oust him or more like a shot across his bow. As this has played out, I know the House is on recess now for a bit, but Republicans you speak to, like, if this becomes a real thing, is, is Johnson in trouble? And if he is, then who possibly would be speaker next? The short answer to your question is, is that there is no one, uh, Jonathan. There's simply not uh, a member of Congress uh, that could garner the type of support necessary to hold on to the speakership, especially when there's only a one-vote margin. And I think that is part of the calculation for even some of the conservative House Republicans, like Matt Gates, for instance, who's outright rejected the idea of removing Johnson. There just isn't another person to fill that void. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, there's going to be three or four of them that say, we still want to do this. And I do think that's where you see perhaps a small a cadre of Democrats either come in and either vote to table this type of motion or just outright vote for Johnson's speakership. They don't want to go through this entire mess because it would be ugly. All right, NBC's Ryan Nobles, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Mike Barnacle, I've been uh, talking, we've been talking today about the Wall Street Journal editorial on the, the, the chaos that's going on right now inside the House uh, Republican caucus. And, and, and let me just read from, from this. You can criticize Ken Buck and Mike Gallagher for leaving early, but who can blame anyone sane for wanting to do something more useful with his life than serving in this house of horribles? These Republicans prefer to make futile gestures of opposition rather than vote to fund the government. 
The same members who undercut the majority, says the Wall Street Journal editorial page. They boast on the House floor and social media that they are the only honest conservatives in Washington. Wall Street Journal calls them posers. They're posers masquerading as principled. And they're treating the voters at home like rubes. The posers of the House GOP, the Wall Street Journal editorial page concludes, the posers of the House GOP remind us of a comment by former Senator Jim DeMent that he'd rather have 30 senators who agreed with him than a Republican majority. Congratulations to Mr. DeMent. Mm. The current House GOP is close to realizing this ambition. And Mike, I've never seen anything like it. I know you've never seen anything like it. We've been around for a very long time. We've, we've, we've studied politics for a very long time. You have Republicans leaving left and right. There are now one Republican leaving away from possibly turning the House chamber over to Hakeem Jeffries and the Democrats. So Republicans there are voting with their feet. They say, no, thank you. No mas. Yeah, Joe, the uh, sudden and abrupt resignation of Mike Gallagher really surprised me. Uh, not that it wasn't, you know, well planned or whatever, but it was the immediacy of it that I'm retiring. I'm getting out of Congress like next week, <clears throat> not at the end of his term, like next week. Uh, and that was kind of a shock, I think, to a lot of people. But one of the biggest things, and you just alluded to it, and the Wall Street Journal is all over it in the editorial today, <clears throat> is the history of the House of Representatives is much more than the history of the United States of America. It's the history of, of people who represent small districts compared to the Senate, people who absolutely represent the American public, district by district, and the things that the House has passed over the course of the last 50, 60 years have changed the nature of this country. You served in the House 20 years ago now. That's the snap of a finger in terms of history. I remember the House when Tip O'Neill was Speaker, succeeding Carl Albert. I remember the House during the Watergate hearings, during the, during the bulk of the Vietnam War in the late 60s. And the House was a place where they came to legislate, where they came to get something done for the people that they represented in all 435 districts around the country. They were there to represent the people. The House of Representatives, now captured by a majority, of Republicans and a minority of those Republicans, the last thing they seem able to do is to perform the function of governing, of legislating, to help the people they represent, the people of this country, the people of their own district, small towns, big cities. That is gone, and that is a sadness. I don't know how much longer the country can cater to it. I, much know, I don't know how much longer one particular party, mm. the old Republican Party, will go along with it. But it is a disaster. Well, you, you look at the Wall Street Journal editorial page, and I think they, 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 they put it right <laughs> that people that voted uh, to put this Republican majority in in the House, people who wrote checks to help them, are, can, 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 it can be understood why they're asking, what did we get for our money? And you talk about the House. Um, yeah, the House is a place where things got done. Um, you, 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 and you're talking about Tip O'Neill. Um, I loved Chris Matthews' book talking about the relationship between Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan. And in the beginning of the book, uh, Chris quoted Tip O'Neill's son, who said uh, of, of Tip O'Neill's really good relationship with Ronald Reagan, working relationship with Ronald Reagan, he said, you know, my dad, my dad couldn't stand Ronald Reagan's governing philosophy. But the only thing he couldn't stand more than that was not getting things done for the American people. So he knew he had to meet Reagan halfway. Reagan knew the same. They had to work together to govern for the American people. And I'll tell you, Mika, that's what Americans want. I know there are extremes on both no, sides. I agree. I know the Trump extreme has really twisted and contorted politics in America over the past eight years. Yes, it has. Uh, but most Americans yeah. 
conservative, liberal, right. moderate, independent, they want Congress to work. And this Republican Congress just isn't doing it. They're, no. they're and by they're, the numbers, they're by the them. data. They're, they're losing they're, them. They are. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.